Queensland insolvencies skyrocket. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article from the Courier Mail about insolvencies in Queensland are up 55%. Led by construction companies, I'm not surprised, and the ATO increasing pressures. I'm not surprised at all. Now, We've got a 55% increase, but you've got to remember we're coming off a crash in insolvencies. They drop right down. Part of the government's interventions into the economy to save us was there was a period of time during the lockdowns that you could trade while insolvent. And, well, you had mortgage holidays, and the ATO wasn't really chasing debts as much as they were in the past. That's all come to an end. You can no longer trade insolvent. The ATO is going to, well, chase your debts, and... Mortgages need to get paid once again. So let's have a look at this. It's all coming to a home, to a head, isn't it? And we've seen how many builders have gone under, everyone. And you've got to think, this is going to, well, it's going to hit a lot of people now. It's going to impact people who are building now. It's going to impact the people in these companies who, well, lose their jobs, sadly. But it's also going to have an impact on capacity to build for some time. That'll be interesting to estimate. How long do you reckon? Six months? A year? Two years? More? So the number of Queensland insolvencies surged 55% in August, with the building and construction sector buckling under the pressure led by the collapse of Oracle Homes. According to the Australian Securities and Investment Commission, 87 Queensland companies either had liquidators or administrators appointed last month, compared to 69 in June, a 26% increase. Compared to August last year, insolvencies were up 55% as the ATO increased pressure on faltering businesses. Now, we've spoken about the ATO bankrupting businesses or shutting down businesses. They were number two. I think there was a a debt collection agency, which I think Collections House, I think they've gone under now. So now it's ATO, number one spot, winding up your businesses, people not, not able to afford to pay their taxes. Now, is that what we want? Do we want the tax department to shut down businesses? Maybe we need to reduce the tax burden on our citizens. Such a novel idea. The largest collapse last month was Underwood-based Oracle Homes, which owed $14 million and left 300 homes unfinished across Queensland and New South Wales, while Besser Constructions is wound up after owing $1.7 million. So away from construction medical cannabis, Tiku Oceana racked up losses of more than $7 million before administrators were called in. I mean, there you go. You can, yeah. WCT advisory panel, or sorry, advisory partner, Andrew Weatherly said he expected insolvency numbers and inquiries to continue to rise until the end of the year. And then you've got to remember, we'll still have, the impact of that will still be felt for some time. Now, you have to remember, everyone, this, particularly in the construction sector, is because the government juiced up the market. You've got the RBA reducing the cash rate to insane levels, 0.1%. I was talking to to another father today at an event. He managed to get in 1.89%. I said, oh, you beat me. I only got 1.99, but I never thought we'd see rates this low ever again. You've got Home Builder which has brought a whole lot of work forward. And we'll have to see if that starts to result in a slump in demand for the housing sector. But then we've got migration and international students coming back up again. So, <laughs> so we have, you know, maybe even if we go back to normal demand, but we've burned a whole lot of builders out of the construction sector. What do you think that's going to do with the prize? You've got the grants and the grants, just more government money. The first home builder grants, the... I think what is it now? Shared equity in in South in Tasmania is just insane. It's going crazy. You've got five and two percent government deposit loans, two percent. Then, well, negative gearing. I wouldn't say that's a new thing. That's just that's a part of our culture now. Housing is the Australian thing, and the super withdrawals. While the super funds want to tell you everyone spent it on boob jobs. A lot of people use it to pay down debt or to get a deposit into their house. And I honestly, I have no no issue with that at all. I would much rather people 
have their house, have a home that they own, paid off, rather than a whole lot of super there earning them you know, money. So that when they're old, because they've been paying years of fees to manage that, that they take it out and then pay off the super, or then pay off the house. I'd rather that you own a house. But then again, I'm more for voluntary participation in these type of things than nanny paternalistic parental government forcing you to save. Anyway, so there's a lot going on here, and, and the market has been artificially overheated. That's what's happened. We're paying the price. Was it worth it? Will we learn? I don't think we will. I think people will vote for the same stupid policies. The main industries making up the figures are construction, accommodation, food, and other services. I think that it's expected, given the continued issues facing the construction industry and the similar challenges facing the hospitality sector, this is the thing. A subby could go under on a few jobs because you build, you put all everything in there and you don't get paid, you lose all the costs. It could be a nightmare. RSM's new Brisbane's uh, Brisbane managing partner, Steve Healy, said recent ATO activity has shown company directors were in the direct firing line as corporate insolvencies returned to pre-pandemic levels. So there you go. He said as debt becomes more expensive, Australia will enter a rough economic patch with the ATO pursuing companies for non-compliance relating to pay-as-you-go withholding tax, superannuation contributions, and GST. Revive Financial, Head of Business, Restructuring and Insolvency, Javis Archer, said company directors he spoke to at the beginning of the pandemic were now returning to proceed with insolvency appointments. While a large amount of these are liquidation inquiries, the demand for small business restructuring engagements to reduce ATO debts, among others, is steadily increasing. Debt recovery action by landlords and the ATO's significant campaign of director penalty notices is creating serious urgency. Business owners are being given short deadlines to make hard decisions about the future of their businesses. The additional complexity for businesses in this predicament is the economic conditions which are expected to remain challenging in the foreseeable future. Let's, well, let's have a talk about this. It's going to be difficult for a lot of people. A business that you've built, uh, that you've put your whole, whole life into, you've invested your money in, you've spent your time in, you've made sacrifices for. Giving it up isn't that easy. And for some people, it's an emotional decision, an attachment that they have to it. And uh, I don't know what else you can say. There's going to be some tough times going ahead. We had the recession, but it didn't feel like a recession. You had a market overheated. And now, well... Now we're going to start feeling the impact of that. The next few years are going to be interesting, particularly in construction. What do you reckon? It's just sad. We need to, we need to stop allowing or stop getting politicians that just keep perpetuating the same type of bullshit again and again and again. They're just using the entire housing sector to stimulate the economy, to juice it up. We need to, are we going to learn that? Are the masses going to learn that? How can we get that message out there? Because I'm not seeing anyone mention it in the media. I guess it's just accepted. That's just what they do here in Australia. Both sides of the aisle. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions, guys. If you're going through this situation, don't do anything rash or stupid. You always have another chance. That's, that's what I'm more worried about is people go through something like this and then try and end it. It's not worth it. Anyway, take care. I'll see you next time. Check out my other channels, Heiser Says International and Heiser Bim for other content I create. And if you want to support us, there are a few ways you can. Financially on YouTube or Patreon, using our referral links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband, buy a pocket squares or call us if you need an architect. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode of Heiser Says.
Now, our insolvency is going to go higher than pre-pandemic levels. Let's keep watching.